we're going to take a look at the thermodynamic property of entropy. And we abbreviate entropy with a capital S. The capital letter indicates it's a state function, which makes the math easy. And a state function means that the difference in entropy, the delta S, is, which is S final minus S initial, uh, is not path dependent. So that means all we look for is the overall difference from the final state and the initial state. This definition of entropy, S equals K times the natural log of W, is the statistical definition. And we are not going to use this definition, but uh, we'll take a quick look at it. K is Boltzmann's constant. So that is the universal gas constant in joules per mole per degree Kelvin. And when we divide by one mole, then our mole cancels here. So Avogadro's number, 6 times 10 to the 23rd, basically takes the universal gas constant in terms of per mole and changes it into per um, item. And W... Oh, I already wrote that here. W is the number of possible states. So from a statistical point of view, uh, if W equals 1, that means there's only one possible state for a system to be in. And that's actually where we define uh, the third law of thermodynamics, stating that at absolute zero degrees Kelvin, there is only one possible state for a perfect crystal to exist in. So I'm going to write that down here. So this would be a perfect crystal at absolute zero degrees Kelvin. And I've got a picture to show us of that. <coughs> and if we have a perfect crystal that has no defects in it, and it would, be <clears throat> it would be ordered perfectly, and at absolute zero degrees Kelvin, there is no molecular motion. So remember, temperature is a measure of molecular motion. Temperature is not heat. Uh, heat is a form of energy, and temperature is a, a measure of motion. So if we can cool a perfect crystal down to absolute zero degrees Kelvin, there's only one possible picture that we could see. And every time we look at this perfect crystal at absolute zero, it's going to look the same. So here, W equals 1. And again, that's one possible state. So that's what W means. So if we look at the definition of entropy, the ln of 1, natural log of 1 goes to 0. So here we do have an entropy term equal to 0. <clears throat> as soon as we add heat to this, we start uh, seeing motion from the atoms. So if W is definitely going to be greater than 1 here. So the way we look at the number of possible outcomes, I think of it as though we're taking a photograph, uh, we have a camera set up, we take a photograph every second. So if each photograph is not identical, then that means we have different states. So our third law of thermodynamics, which defines where entropy is zero, uh, this is why this has to occur at absolute zero degrees Kelvin. So we're going to look at more of a qualitative uh, view of entropy, and we're going to care about the thermodynamic property, so we're really not going to uh, use this, but from that picture, we, can, we see that uh, entropy increases when disorder increases. Or 
again, that's really the number of possible states that any system can be in. So for a phase change, if we look at a solid versus a liquid versus a gas, a solid is orderly. Maybe this is uh, silver chloride. So this might be a solid AgCl, which is a one-to-one -one ratio, a silver ion and a chloride ion. So we would have this one-to-one -one ratio. If we uh, heat this up, we'd have to get it to a fairly high temperature, but we could get this in a liquid state, or we could also get it in an aqueous state. So a liquid is less ordered, and the particles are free to uh, move with respect to each other. So melted silver chloride <clears throat> would have more disorder, or let's say we added it to water. That really makes more sense. Then we'd have aqueous silver chloride. <clears throat> in which case we'd have silver ions separated and dissolved in water. So melting a solid is very different than dissolving a solid, but in either case we would have more disorder in either of these states than the solid. So our entropy would be increasing in this direction. And finally, I suppose we could really heat silver chloride up to a very high temperature and um, turn it into individual atoms or a gas. So I'm just going to draw any gas in general. And so a gas, because it takes up so much space, and each gas particle is in constant motion. Every time we take a picture of the gas, if we could do that on a molecular level, we would have a different photograph. So here a gas is always going to have the highest uh, entropy. And the more gas there is, the more disorder there would be. And I'm going to just <clears throat> talk about that for just a minute, uh, what the values have to do with. A lot of times the number of states is how many things you have. So one factorial equals one. If you have one item, there's only one way for that to be arranged. If we have two items, two factorial is two times one, so we get two. So two possible outcomes as opposed to one. Three factorial is three times two times one, which is six. And four factorial Four times three times two oops, times one is 24. So we can see from statistics that the, the more items there are to rearrange, the much greater possible arrangements there are. So five times four times three times two times one is 120. So this, the highest entropy is always going to occur for a gas, and also the more gas particles there are, or the number of moles of the gas, is going to increase the number of possible arrangements. And this isn't a direct uh, correspondence here, but uh, we're going to take a look at uh, just looking at any chemical reaction and seeing if the entropy change is positive or negative. And what we want to remember about entropy is we define entropy in terms of disorder. So usually we talk about how much something has. For example, how much order something has, not how much disorder something has. So we want to remember that with entropy. It's always a measure of disorder. Okay. So if we look, if we just think about this, in an increase in entropy or we could write delta S would be positive. The final minus the initial would be a positive number. 
or the, the increase in entropy means a or an increase in disorder. Or we could also think of that as less order. And a decrease in entropy that means S final minus S initial. This is going to be a larger number, so we take a small number to, and subtract a larger number from it. That means our delta S is going to be a negative number. So a decrease in entropy is a decrease in disorder. So in a way, this is like a double negative. We decrease disorder, so that's the same as increase in order. This is the most favorable, and we don't really have to go far to see that. If you look at the top of my desk or you look at your sock door, um, it's, it's apparent that the universe proceeds in the direction of going from order toward disorder. So this is uh, going to be one of the criteria we look at when we decide or calculate whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. So if we look at a chemical reaction, for example, our system of interest in chemistry is always going to be a reaction, and there is a famous reaction called the Haber process, which takes hydrogen gas and reacts it with nitrogen gas in the air, and this is a reversible reaction, but I'm going to write it just going in one direction, making ammonia. Just from looking at the system, we can predict the sign of delta S. And if we look at these gases and assume that these are ideal gases, we have three, oh, four. We have four moles of a gas reacting to form two moles of a gas. <coughs> And if we think about that uh, number of possible states, four things can be rearranged in uh, many more ways than two things can. So just from a statistical point of view, four gases going to two gases is a decrease in disorder. And so this means that the delta S term is negative, or that it's less than zero. And this is not the favorable direction that the universe takes. We're going to take a look at this reaction in the next slide, <clears throat> and we'll see that the other term, enthalpy, is great. So if we, this reaction does proceed spontaneously because it's an exothermic reaction, and that term ends up uh, in competition with the disorder term. So we're going to take a look at deciding whether a reaction is spontaneous. So we're not only going to have to look at delta S, but we will look at delta H. So that's, that's coming up on the next slide. But what we want to be able to do is just look at any reaction and decide whether the entropy is increasing or decreasing. So if we have solid silver chloride and we dissolve that in water, actually that won't dissolve in water, we'll take sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate will dissolve in water. Our second example. Here we have more order automatically because this is a solid, so we have an ordered arrangement in a lattice structure. And over here we have disorder because we have ions in solution. So we go from order to disorder. That means our entropy term is increasing. 
And again, this is more favorable. And one other possibility that we might consider is the size of molecules. So we could look at the thermodynamic tables and look at CH4 in the back of the book. And this is going to have an entropy term equal to something. Or if we compare that to, this is methane, we compare this to ethane. So here our entropy is going to be increasing. So S will increase as the molecule gets larger. So again, that sort of comes back to the argument of looking at W, the number of possible states that something could be in. So the more atoms there are in a mo molecule, the more uh, likely we are to see different arrangements. So if we go from methane to ethane, and one more example to propane, we could have three carbons and all hydrogens around here. Just because this is a larger molecule, well, that is going to have more entropy than a smaller molecule. And again, that's because of the statistical model and looking at total number of atoms that there are to build the molecule. And remember, if we're above absolute zero, everything's moving. So there's just more motion and more atoms to participate in that. So a larger molecule has more entropy.